All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for the introduction. I appreciate that. My name is Wendy. I am a training and content specialist at ARMLS. Um, Sarah asked me to talk today about adding a listing. And if we have time, we'll do a quick demo on Rapid Stats. Um, not sure if everybody's familiar with Rapid Stats or if you already have a subscription for Rapid Stats, but essentially it's an add on product. What I'm going to go ahead and do is post a quick video about it, and you can kind of watch that on your own time um, after today's class. Let me just go ahead and pull up this video real quick. Um, tell me, does your broker have any specific rules about? Um, whether or not you can copy a listing. Does everybody copy a listing? You can raise hands or unmute yourself, talk out loud, whatever you want to do. I copy listings. You copy. Okay. So some brokers are like, nope, no copying is allowed. Um, some brokers are okay with it. So I just want to make sure that that was something that we regularly but do. At yeah, that doesn't mean that I don't audit and verify because many times the information is incorrect, but it gets me through 90% of the information. Absolutely. That's exactly it. Just trying to pull up this video. So there's basically three different things that you can do. You can copy, you can add a listing straight from scratch, or you can um, do a full copy. Full copy isn't regularly used, so I'm not going to touch base on full copy that much, but essentially full copy is if it's your previous listing and you are still at that brokerage. Let me just go ahead and pull up this video real quick, and then I'm going to start showing you guys ARMLS.com. One second. Rapid stats. All right. So I went ahead and plugged in the video for rapid stats. Let me go ahead and get armls.com open and we will um, start our class. Well, I have it open. I just need to make sure that you guys can see it. Hold on real quick. Let's do screen sharing and let's do this. All right. Share. All right, so we should see armls.com. There we go. So I'm just gonna point out a couple of things here before we actually get started into adding a listing. Um, one thing that I do wanna point out is the rules tab. The rules tab is pretty important when it comes to adding a listing. You wanna make sure that um, you know how to contact data integrity. You have a basic understanding of the rules and regulations. Um, other things that I would pay attention to is some changes that came recently, public marks changes, and then the uh, rules 8.23 and watermarks. I do have a bit of a slideshow that I will show you. I'm not going to go through the full presentation because we only have an hour for this class, um, but I'll make sure that we cover the basics as far as the rules go. All right, the next thing I want to point out is underneath the support tab, who do I contact? And everybody can see my screen, right? If you can't see my screen, just chime in. I'm going to assume everybody can see it. Um, for the who do I contact page, this is a great reference guide if you are ever stuck. Maybe it's a weekend or maybe you're, it's the afternoon hours, right? Or the evening hours and your broker or your mentor is not available. This little guide is a pretty useful reference about who you need to contact and what entity they are. So for example, if you have questions about an ER or EA form, you need to contact AAR, the state association. If you had questions about flex or lock boxes or monsoon, you contact ARMLS. We also have a live chat option um, and you can do emails. If you had questions about continuing education, you need to contact your local association. So this might be a reference guide that's awesome for when you don't know who to contact. Um, you can always refer back to this list. I recommend bookmarking this page or maybe taking a screenshot and start adding contacts to your phone. At the bottom, we do have the local association phone numbers, the state association phone number, 
And then here's our live chat and email options. AR MLS is open um, Monday through Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. for the most parts. Holidays are exceptions. Next thing I want to point out on the support tab is the AR MLS blog. The ARMS blog is literally a reference guide or a database made just for you. Um, every time we post information on the blog, we try and make it useful and relevant and important for your daily life in real estate. So it's not a bunch of fluff stuff. It's literally content that's made just for you. Um, here's, a, here's a blog that was just recently published on multiple dwellings, um, understanding the difference between multiple dwellings. Um, we try and make them bite-sized pieces of information, so less than 300 words. They're designed to get you in, get you out, and on with your real life. I do highly recommend you subscribe to the ARMLS blog. You can click that sign up link, type in your email address. Every time we update a blog, you'll get a notification. Sometimes it's about twice a week, um, once a week if it's a slow schedule. But literally, the blog has answers to all your questions. So. If it's the weekend or your broker's on vacation or your mentor's not available, refer back to the ARMLS blog for any questions that you might have regarding any question about flex, monsoon, lock boxes, supra rules. We try our best to publish a little bit of everything in there. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna pull up is the rules PowerPoint. And we're just gonna go through some of these slides. And of course, if you have questions, do make sure that you, you know, ask questions in the, in the chat, raise your hand. I'll do my answer question. So the first thing that we want to talk about with rules, and this is especially important, like I said, with adding a listing. So if you will go adding a listing and you're not familiar with the rules, um, that might cause you to be in a situation where you're getting a fine or a violation, and we want to avoid that. The first thing I want to tell you about is media. What is media? How do we define media? So media is photos, files, documents, virtual tours, um, renderings, floor plans, and videos. You cannot have contact information in the media. So no phone numbers, no email address, no individual names, no websites, no entity names or advertising of any time, uh, any kind, excuse me. And also what I want you to focus on is this is only what's in the MLS. What you're posting on your social media or your Facebook is not considered media. We're only talking about in Flex MLS. So when you are displaying information like contact information in the media or in Flex MLS, um, it causes confusion about who the potential client should be contacting. So that's why there's specific areas uh, for your contact information and why we don't want information inside public remarks because it creates confusion for the potential client. All right, media must not include pictures of people. So people in the foreground is not okay. If for some reason there's a few people in the background, that's okay. Don't worry about that. But here are some examples of foreground. Must not include text. So this is a new rule that Colette kind of rolled out. It's the 8.23, and I believe we are still in the educational phase. So for some reason, you were to break this rule, um, you are in the educational fee phase. There's no fines or fees or anything. It's just education. And I believe September 1st is when this officially rolls out. Roberta, you have a question? Go ahead. Let me see if I can unmute you. Oh, you got it. I do have a question. And, and it might be the wrong forum for it, but why? And the specific reason why, even though I don't do it, the, there is such a huge problem still with um, Zillow in particular, um, not Zillow, but pe people posting on Zillow homes that we have for sale that they put up, that scammers put up for rent. Oh, so wow. I've always yeah. liked, quite frankly, how various realtors mark not for rent so I'm just curious from a consumer protection standpoint, do you know why they made this rule? I think that you're on the right track with your question. Um, it, not only is it like a consumer protection issue, the next slide is actually a ARMLS approved watermarks. So for example, if you were to see the one that okay. says not for rent, 
um, that's not an AR MLS approved uh, that says for rent, excuse. Oh no, it says not for rent. Yeah, I read it right. Not for rent. Um, that's not an ARMLS approved watermark. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you, we do have ARMLS approved watermarks um, that you can download from ARMLS and apply things if you want. You don't have to, but it's an option. Otherwise, if you have watermarks that are in this example, that's not okay. Um, so my second question is, just on that virtually staged one. I get the solar owned one, I get the pickleball one, but the virtually staged one, I thought we had, I thought there was some rule that we had to indicate if our photos are virtually staged. Is we have only go in the narrative. Yeah, we have a virtually staged watermark as well. Um, okay, I'll show you. have to indicate <laughs> virtual staging, but it's optional. So if you are going to virtual stage and you want to have a notation saying that it's virtually staged, you can. Um, but as far as like the text overlays, one of the reasons why we're not allowing text overlays is ADA rules and regulations. So it's not ADA co compliant. So people that are visually impaired, they can't necessarily see, let's say that solar owned, right? Maybe that color or that font um, is not user friendly for visually impaired. Uh, you also have the text descriptions, so you can put it in the text boxes, whether it's the title or the description of the photo. So if you do want to notate that it's solar owned on that specific example, you can. You just don't want to put an overlay on the photo. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, so ARMLS approved watermarks. If you go to ARMLS.com backslash watermarks, here are the approved watermarks that you can uh, indicate. Um, if it's not one of these watermarks, then don't use it, right? That's going to be a violation come September 1st. Public remarks, do's and don'ts. Um, so here's an example of some don'ts. Um, in here, we can see, oh, these are the do's, excuse me, don'ts are coming up. So essentially, my message when it comes to public remarks is describe the property. If you are descri describing the property and its attributes, you will not have any problems with public remarks. Once you stray away from that, describing the property, you might get into those don'ts section. And here are some examples of the public remarks don'ts. My slideshow doesn't want to move forward. There we go. All right, so we have a phone number. We have the name of the business, another phone number. Um, so the reason why you don't want to have public remarks or information in public remarks is again, it creates confusion. It's unfair. It's not, um, it's not on the same level fields of clear cooperation. So those are all reasons why you want to make sure that you are just describing the property attributes within public remarks. Another thing is, is everything has its place when you're adding a listing. So if you want to do a phone number, if you want to do agent to agent communications, if you want to include um, showing information or lock, uh, not lockbox, the like gate codes and alarm codes. Everything has its place in FlexMLS for that. Public remarks is not the place to put that because again, the public sees this. All right, again, that's exactly what I pointed out. There is a section for open house if you want to put information inside open house. Um, access codes, there's a section for access codes. I'll show you that when we go through the adding a listing process. Um, here's an example of a violation. You want to make sure that you are moving your listing along the appropriate timelines and then also reflecting the prices. So here we can see an example in FlexMLS, it shows one price in Monsoon or the County Assessor, it shows another price. That would be an example of a violation. You want to make sure that you are changing the prices as it kind of goes through its timeline. Copying photos is also a violation. It's copyright infringement, for one. Um, two, why do you want to copy old photos, right? Um, let's say that the previous listing had photos in there from 2010, and it's 2023, so a few years have gone by. Um, those photos are probably old. People have probably made updates. You can get permission from the previous brokerage to copy photos if you desire. So if you get permission, written permission, you can do that. But in the most case, I would say 99% of the time, don't even bother trying to copy photos. Um, it's copyright infringement and they're probably old anyway. So just avoid that. Make sure you're taking your own photos and 
have your own marketing and, and creativity added there. Sharing ARML, ARMLS credentials is a no-no, not your friend, not your neighbor, not your broker, not your assistant, nobody gets your ARMLS credentials. Um, here is some information about managing your listing deadlines. I'm going to show you on the next page. It looks a little bit easier to, to look at visually. So there is a timeline. Um, you have two calendar days to enter in your listing from the agreed upon date, right? So if today is what, the 11th, and I told my client, hey, I'll have your listing in the uh, MLS, um, and this is our agreed upon contract date, I still have a two-day window to get it fully added to Flex MLS. After that, you could have a problem. So two days to get your uh, listing added to the MLS. Four calendar days to add a front exterior photo. Why would you forget the front exterior photo? I don't know, but maybe it was blurry, right? And you took it out and you're like, oh, I'll put a new one up later. Maybe your photographer is still getting photos back, but you wanted to add what you had. That's perfectly fine. Just know that you have a four day window to get your front exterior photo to your listing if for some reason it's not attached at the time of um, being added to the MLS. Three calendar days to change the status. So if you're not active, you get an offer, you want to move it to a UCB or pending. After the signed contract, you have a three day window to officially move it from that active status to under contract. Two calendar days to change it from that UCB or pending status to close. So after the close of escrow or the uh, rental contract is signed, then you have a two-day window to make it reflective of closed in Flex MLS. And the last thing that I want to just point out is this is not really easy to under, under um, remember, excuse me, the 24322 two rule. So as a cheat, what I would just say is days of two. If you can do everything in a two-day window, you will always be in compliance. You will never have any issues with being outside of compliance, possibly getting a fee or a violation. So try and get everything done in a two-day window and you will or less, and you'll always um, be in good graces. All right, so those are just a little bit about rules, things that I wanted to point out to you before we get started on the adding a listing process. Um, I'm moving over to Flex MLS, so you should see my Flex MLS screen, and I see something in the chat. Okay, awesome, just a confirmation. Um, so I do have Flex MLS open, and I do wanna point out a couple of things. If you've never had a listing before, one thing that I highly recommend is taking our full course. Um, it's typically about 90 minutes and we'll cover a little bit of everything about adding a listing. Um, but if you've never added a listing before, this is your first time experiencing this, a few things that you're gonna need. Um, underneath the menu option, if you click on menu, underneath the add change category, these are potentially items that you'll be paying attention to throughout this process. We have adding a listing, change listing, my incomplete copy, full copy. And then there's one underneath daily functions. It's tours and open houses. Those are things in typical you may be paying attention to when you are adding a listing. So before we even actually start this process, I do want to point out this iceberg illusion of success. And I want you to keep this in the back of your mind. Um, the iceberg illusion of success essentially is the successful part of adding your listing, which is on the top of the iceberg, what everybody sees. This is adding your listing to Flex MLS, right? There's all this work underneath the iceberg, all this stuff that you have to do to successfully add your listing. You have to do the listing presentation. You have to do comparables or CMAs. You have to do some research on um, whether or not it was previously listed. You have to do a input, listing input form or a Plano. Um, you have to actually sit down at your computer. It could take a couple of hours if it's your first time to add the listing. Just know you can take breaks, you can walk away. Um, but do do your due diligence and make sure that, just like Roberta said earlier, um, that you are going through, I um, maybe it wasn't Roberta, Donna, maybe it was you, I'm not quite sure. Um, you're going through the process, especially if you're copying a listing and double checking everything, making sure that what was true then is still true now and it's accurate and factual. You don't want to just 
click the boxes to click the boxes and move through the process because you can. Um, so definitely make sure that you give yourself a couple of hours um, to add a listing. If it's your first time, maybe have your um, mentor or broker available with you to help. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to just focus to solely today on the copy process. Um, is copy and adding a listing is slightly different, but since copy is okay at uh, Remax, I'm going to go ahead and start with this process here. So before I actually go through and copy, I need to find out whether or not my listing has transacted in the MLS. So I'm going to type in the address, South Williams Place. There we go. So I can see that the listing that I have is has transacted in the MLS before. And I'm sorry, it's taking a little bit of time to load. My apologies. Maybe my internet is going a little bit slow. But essentially what I'm doing is I'm pulling up the previous listing information. You definitely want to have this available to you. You want to make sure I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera real quick. Maybe that will make a difference. That video. All right. So um, you want to make sure that you have this previous information available because, again, you can copy a lot of it over. So you want to either save this or print it out so that way when you're ready to add the listing, you have it available to you. One thing that I do need is the MLS ID number. So I'm just go ahead and copy that. So at this point, I want to um, copy a listing and I'm going to click on copy and it's going to ask me what MLS ID number do you want to copy? I'm just going to paste that in, deselect copy photos. If that option is available, deselect that always, no copying of photos. And then I'm going to hit next. It's going to ask me what type of property is this? We're going to stick to residential. And then we've got a few other pieces of information. I need to add my listing information you, or my uh, member information. You might already have yours pop up there. Um, since I'm staff, mine acts a little bit different. If you have a co-listing agent, you can add a co-listing agent. It's not required. Um, just know a couple of things. If you have a co-listing agent added, they have access to edit your listing um, and change information. So if they make a mistake, let's say they uh, don't do the correct sales price or they don't move it from an active to a pending status timely. Um, ultimately, since you are the listing agent, you bear the responsibility of any mistakes that happen. So definitely make sure that if you've had a co-listing agent, you trust that person. I'm gonna go ahead and press next. And here we've got some information that's already added. Since I'm copying the listing, I've got a lot of the address information added. I don't have to change that. Well, one thing that you always, always, always wanna do is click populate tax data. No matter you're adding a listing, copying a listing, doing a full copy, always click on populate tax data. A couple of things are gonna happen. Not only is the tax information going to be transferred over uh, for the current year, some other pieces of information are going to be pulled over as well as school district information. The more information you can auto populate, the better it is for you. So it's less risk of errors. So I'm going to go ahead and click auto populate or populate tax data. And then I'm going to go to the next screen. And then we can see some information has been filled out. I have the current owners. I've got, so if I scroll down, school district information. So the district is the only thing that's going to populate there. This is all from the previous listing, the elementary school, the junior high, and the high school. Definitely make sure that you're going to the school district website, confirming that these schools are still the schools for this particular residence. Um, it changes frequently, right? Um, sometimes schools close, sometimes schools are rezoned, sometimes new schools are built. I wouldn't necessarily trust what the homeowner is telling you. They might not have children that age, or maybe they're empty nesters. Um, maybe their kids go to private school. You never know. So definitely make sure that you are going to the school district that's auto-populated and confirming the elementary school, junior high, and high school. I'm going to go ahead and move up to the top. So a couple of things that I'm going to add in is the list price, and I'm going to sell this house for $100,000. It's a bargain. So it's $100,000. I'm going to make it an active status. If you choose to do coming soon, you can do coming soon for up to 30 days. So if for some reason, maybe they want to get the carpets cleaned or they're finishing painting, they're just not ready for it to go active today, that's fine. You can leave it in a coming soon status for up to 30 days. On day 31, it'll automatically go to active. 
you can also choose to swap it to an active status um, when you're ready. So if you don't need the full page, you only need 14, you can switch to active whenever you're ready. Ready. List date, I'm gonna do today as a listing date. And then I'm gonna not go through all of the fields, but I'm gonna go through some of the fields that I think might need some explaining or is relevant. So if you have any questions about anything specifically, just let me know. Um, I'm really only going to cover a couple of things that I think are important and relevant since we only have an hour today. Um, first thing I want to point out is anything in red means it's required. You cannot skip these fields. If you skip them, you will not be able to add your listing. If it's in black, it's not required, but does that mean you should skip it? No, you should still look at it and do your due diligence because you want to represent the property to the best of your ability. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out auction type. No, sometimes you can do auctions. Um, if you're going to have an auctioneer come to the property, yes, that would be the case. But in most cases, we see auction no. Uh, type, if you don't know what type you should be using, I would definitely look at this uh, little description here. ER is exclusive rights. EA is exclusive agency. I'm going to choose ER today. Um, the ownership is usually going to be fee simple, but in your, if you're in situations where you're selling a condo or a timeshare, you might choose other options there. For this particular property, it's going to be fee simple. We don't do subagents, so we're always going to choose no for subagents. Buyer broker, you're always going to choose yes. Essentially, that means are you willing to work with a buyer's broker? That's clear cooperation. Absolutely. So you always want to click yes there. Here, you have to indicate whether or not you're giving a dollar amount or a percentage. I sometimes see dollar amounts for rentals, uh, like it's a flat commission of $500, that type of thing. And then I usually see percentages for uh, traditional sales. So we're going to indicate whether or not it's a dollar amount or a percent, and then give the commission information. So I'm going to give a 4% commission. How about that? Pay me. All right. So variable commissions, you can select yes or no. doesn't matter what you choose. You can always make changes to this field later if you are not willing to vary the commission at this moment. Um, but if you choose no and then you change it later, just switch it to yes. That's definitely something that's changeable. You just can't leave it blank. Some of this information is already filled out. If your clients don't want their names here, maybe they're celebrities or a judge or whatever, you can always delete their names and put clients of. And then just your office. Uh, I'll do ABC Realty whatever you want to put. If for some reason they don't want their names there, that's totally okay. Also pay attention to these little um, help texts. So you have a little question mark. Sometimes there's little information bubbles. If you're not sure what to put, definitely check out those. And of course, remember you can talk, talk to support. Um, let's see. Oh, this is kind of important right here, square footage. So the county assessor is saying that it's 1595 for the square feet. Well, one of my homeowners says, oh, I measured it with a ruler. It's 1800. Okay, fine. I'll put 1800, but you need to make sure that you're sourcing um, who told you that, who gave you that piece of information. So if it was the homeowner, let's change it to homeowner. Builder information is not here. Hmm. Okay. There's a couple of places that I can get it. If I go to the previous listing, uh, you should see I'm on the report window. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Monsoon. And it's going to open up a little window inside Monsoon. And then I can get some of the information from Monsoon. If builder, important, uh, if builder name is important to you, you want to make sure you have that in. You can, um, and you can consult Monsoon. If I scroll down a little bit, I'm going to see Builder Key Construction. There we go. So I just copy and paste that information over. If for some reason the property is like old or there's no builder name, builder information available, you can always click unknown or uh, type in unknown and that would satisfy that field. All right, so moving down the list, other things that I want to point out to you, cross streets had already transferred over, but the directions did not. Um, that was kind of proprietary information from the previous listing agent. So you want to make sure that you type in your own directions. Um, you have 200 characters available for directional information. Public remarks, again, remember, you want to make sure you, that you're consulting the inappropriate language policy. Check these little text boxes, or these little bubbles here for information. You can't do a phone number. You can't do an HTML code. 
those are automatically restricted. So if I tried to type in a number, it wouldn't let it wouldn't let me move forward. Um, always remember on public remarks, describe the property. If you're describing the property, you'll be okay. You have 800 characters available for that. Private remarks. This is agent to agent communication. So if there's something that um, yeah, do not display or do not disclose agent to agent communication. I'm literally just reading the sentence right here. So if there's something that you need to say in private remarks for other agents, um, or you want to communicate information to other agents, this would be that section, and you have 800 characters. Semi-private semi remarks, 400 characters available. This would be great if you want to share information with your clients, but it's not necessarily mandatory. Let's say I'm not going to show that house. Do I need to share information? No. What if there's a note in private remarks that says pool table for sale? Um, or maybe it says remove shoes. Um, or maybe it says wear a mask, right? Um, whatever it is that I want to communicate uh, to other agents and possibly have them communicate it to their clients, I would put it here. But if I'm skipping this house, I'm not going to go show it. Do I need to talk to my clients about removing their shoes? No, that's not relevant. I don't need to share that with my clients. So that's information you can choose to share with your clients if necessary. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next field or the next section. One thing I do want to point out is it's auto saving every two minutes. It'll auto save for, for some reason you need to walk away or maybe your computer dies. Just know it is auto saving information for you. So you don't necessarily have to start from scratch if something uh, egregious happens. I'm going to go ahead and click next. All right, here we have lots of information that needs to be filled out. This is why I tell you it could take a couple of hours. As I scroll through this list, you can see all the different things that we need to cover. Some things are mandatory, some things aren't. But just because it's not mandatory doesn't mean you should skip it. So a couple of things I want to point out is let's look at special listing conditions. Um, last time the agent listed this property, it says NA, nothing. But, you know, maybe now it's in an age-restricted community. Um, maybe now I'm the owner agent, right? I need to disclose that. So definitely make sure that you're checking the correct boxes. Something needs to be selected here. It has um, at least one box needs to be checked in this category in order for you to be able to move forward. HOA information, there's a lot of red here, right? That means it's required. And this is on HOA, yes. If I were to change it to no, you're going to see some of those required fields have gone away. So it makes your life a little bit easier if it's not in an HOA. If it is in an HOA, there's lots of information that you're going to have to double check. Um, some of this information your homeowner is not going to know. So make sure that you call the HOA. Or you can look at some of the previous listing information and get some of this information. Maybe a HOA transfer fee or the HOA phone number. You can get that information from the previous listing. Other things, they might have changed. So the monthly fee, right? Maybe it was $25 and now it's $55. Who knows? Definitely double check with the HOA. Um, as we move down the list, other things that I would want to point out on this field, not everything needs to be filled out, but some things are important. You want to make sure that you're, uh, you know, we're talking about it. Um, pool features. Um, the last listing agent pool, but this particular house has a fenced pool. It also has a play pool, right? I looked at the definition. It tells me this is what a play pool means. So I'm going to check that box. Checking the boxes and making sure that you're accurately covering the property is super important. Um, we have two rules when it comes to the adding a listing process and then searching. When it comes to adding a listing, more is more. The more you add, the better it is. On the reverse, when it comes to searching, less is more. The less you tell FlexMLS, the more it's going to find for you. So talking about adding a listing, make sure you're covering all your bases. You never know who's looking for a play pool. If you didn't check that box, they're not going to see your property. So definitely try and cover all the property attributes that you possibly can. Make sure you're accurately describing the property because you never know who's looking for that information. Here's another example. In community features, the previous agent just put children's playground. While that's true, there's more information I could add. So it's in a historical district. There's a bus stop nearby. 
Um, maybe there's a walking path. I don't know. You want to make sure that you're going through and, and kind of seeing the lay of the land. As we scroll down this list, there's other things here that I definitely want to make sure that I'm pointing out to you. Um, items updated is this is not looking for subjective information, just be factual. So, for example, if I was going to buy this property and I found out that there was a full air condition replaced in 2017, that's awesome, right? Even though it was a few years ago, it's still awesome for me because air conditioning could potentially last 20, 30 years, right? Um, if the pool was remodeled in 2001, that might be not awesome, but I still want to know that. Maybe I need to re redo the pool soon. So definitely look at uh, factual information when you're including items updated. Um, whether or not it was recent or not recent isn't necessarily relevant. You want to make sure that you're just recording the dates factually. Um, as we move down this list more, there's one other thing that I want to point out to you here. And it's about showing instructions. It gets a little dicey in this section, so I want to make sure that I'm kind of talking about it. See, I keep going through this list. You could be here for days, days and days. Okay, showing instructions. So right now we have permission required to show, and I get an option for yes or no. If I change this to no, you're going to see some of this information um, refresh and give me different options. So let's change it to no. So if I change it, permission required to show no, I still have this notify option. So what does that mean? Um, in layman's terms, I can ask for permission to show yes or no, right? But maybe if I say no, you don't have to ask my permission. Maybe I still want a notification, right? Hey, give me a heads up that you were there. Send me a text message, right? Let me know that you were there, um, even though I'm not asking you for, to give me, per, or even though I'm not telling you, you need to ask me for permission. So if I change it to yes, that notify goes away and it gives me the option to schedule a showing. So if I say, yes, I want permission, well, how am I going to get that information from you? How are we going to communicate? Well, you can do anything you'd like. Um, any option is okay. Just make sure that you're getting my permission. So this is super important if you're not following showing instructions um, that could put you in a situation where you're getting a violation. So make sure you're paying attention to that section. And then let's say, for example, the last one that I really, really like is contact information. If I'm the primary agent, but I also have a co-listing agent, um, I can add everybody's information here. And let's say I'm, I'm sick or I'm out of town or um, some life event happened. I can change who the primary contact is here. So if listing agent is listed as a primary contact, but I want to change that, and make it the co-listing agent, I can select that box and deselect that box. And that way I'm indicating inside the listing which phone number you should be calling. Um, so I've seen situations where sometimes um, the agent office information is being selected, like it's a primary phone number. Um, you can always check contact information and make sure that the box is checked for who you want to be the primary contact. And then that information will be reflected in FlexMLS. So if I needed to walk away from this, maybe I have a listing appointment, I can click on save and complete. Even though it's auto saving, I still wanna click save and complete. And then I'm given the option to come back and edit this information later, right? So if I walked away, hours have gone by, how do I find this again? Underneath menu, my incompletes. And here I have lots of different incompletes that I was working on. So what I would recommend you do is just pay attention to the last time and date stamp. So that's not it. This one or this one, this one right here, 511. Um, at this point, I'm gonna click on edit and then I can go back into my listing and finish the editing process. Maybe I have photos ready and I want to add some photos. Um, here is what I was talking about earlier with the rules. If you have photos, Let's see if I can add a photo real quick. Give me a second. I've got a couple of photos that I'm pulling in. And here's what I was talking about earlier. You can't do the text overlays because of ADA regulations. You never know who's visually impaired that's looking at this information. You can always make sure that you're editing the title 
And then you can put the description here, right? So if there's stuff that you want to explain about a photo, make sure that you're adding the description information. Another thing that I want to point out is the first photo doesn't have to be the primary photo. If you want the pool photo to be the primary photo, you can make it that way. What you're going to do is click on this little flag, and then it'll make this photo as the public primary photo. It doesn't have to be um, the first photo that's selected. Um, another fun fact is you can drag and move photos um, in a different order if you want them to be displayed in a different order. Or you can click these little downward carrots. Yes, Roberta, you have a question? Yeah, I feel like I'm not keeping up on the rules these days. I thought that a rule was passed a couple of years ago that we had on a primary photo, it had to be the front elevation of the property. It couldn't be the living room or the pool or the what this or that, unless it was a condo or townhouse, which was not feasible to do a front door shot. The, the, um, that's a good point. And I think I remember that issue coming up with, but I think it was for another MLS actually. Um, the front exterior photo has to stay with the listing, whether it's closed or open. Is that the, what you're asking about? No, no, I understood front exterior. a couple of years ago, there was a change made so that there weren't all these crazy random photos being the primary photo. I get what you're saying. You can pick any one of the photos in the series to be the primary photo, but I thought that the rule was that for single family houses, it had to be the front elevation and not some other random photograph that does not depict mm, what the house looks like. Look. I have been trying to throw you a curveball there, but that no, has been kind it's of not a curveball. We want to make sure that we're consulting the rules on that, and rules change all the time, right? So um, if I've been saying that the front exterior photo doesn't have to be the primary photo, well, that's not good on my part, right? Um, but I want to make sure photo requirements. Let's go ahead and look at this. The exterior photo must remain with the listing throughout um, its life, regardless of status changes, may not be removed under any circumstances. The main exterior photo does not have to be the primary photo attached to the listing unless it is the sole photo attached to the listing. So I think... I've been giving good advice. Thank goodness. Whew. So I'm just well, not up, up to speed on this and maybe okay. misinterpreted the rule. So Although, as long as the exterior right photo stay, <laughs> as long as the front exterior stays with the photo or stays with the listing um, throughout the life cycle, it needs to have, that's the only one that needs to stay, but it doesn't have to be the primary photo while, you know, it's active okay. listing. Does that help? Oh, well, good. Awesome. So usually I consult the rules when it comes to weird things like that. But if I can't find it in the rules, I always just send a quick message to data integrity. When in doubt, I send them a message. I give them a call. I don't want to be in that situation where I'm like, oh, is this still a rule? Is it not a rule? Did it change? Did it not change? Um, while we're on the topic, I do want to point out this information for the public remarks in the uh, rule 8.23. With the public remarks changes, remember how I said earlier, make sure that you're describing the property. Um, well, if you go to this public remarks micro page right here, it'll tell you, here's some allowable things. Here's things that you want to avoid. It's giving you some examples. But if you're still on the fence, you're like, hey, this is my phrase. This is what I want to put in public remarks. You can go ahead and submit your phrase to Data Integrity and they'll review it. So they'll give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, so when in doubt, essentially that's all I'm uh, reminding you guys of is submit it to data integrity. I never want you to be in a situation where um, you're getting a penalty or a fine or a violation. Um, they will definitely steer you in the right direction. So that's that's on that one. So let's go ahead and um, move I always away. have questions. So sorry, yeah, oh, since you just mentioned that, what about in private remarks? What is there a page there for what's allowed in private remarks or not private remarks, for example? Um, for that, let's use XYZ title company. Mm -hmm. So for that, um, there's no specific information on that micro page at armls.com, but usually I consult those little information bubbles. So where did I find it? Public remarks cover. So usually this little paragraph tells you what you can and can't put. Um, you can give recommendations on title, but you can't say things like must use XYZ title company. You can say, you know, please use or preferred. 
Um, but you can't say like make things required, like you're required to do this. Um, so those are things that you want to avoid when you're talking about title. Hmm. What are your, what are you thinking? What's your question? Well, because I, I, I mean, not to take up time here, but I have a specific group of listings and only one title company in the entire state will insure them. And so I've said, please use mm -hmm. because it's directive. And why, why, why do I need to show my clients 15 offers of title companies? They're never going to insure. Right. Um, and so I've put that it language in there and been hit as a, not a paid penalty, but just a warning. Mm -hmm. And you can't put that in the private remarks. So. Well, then don't say must. The word, they say. No, I don't say must. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I use the word please. And even the please is not a pleasing to people. Really? <laughs> so that's why I was asking, because I still, I see it all the time. Um, and just don't do anything about it with other people, but. Yeah. Know. I would definitely say you can, that. you can call that agent uh, if you want to be the bigger person or you can just report an error um, on that listing. Um, so a lot of errors come from other agents, right? right. Yeah, we have software. Uh, sometimes it, the data integrity team is looking at listings, but they can't catch, you know, all 10,000 listings that are active and coming soon um, without the software right. or without other people reporting. So um, as long as you're not saying must, you sh you shouldn't have an issue. But should be okay. Yeah. And when we click an error, it, does, does anybody know? Yeah. I mean, it, most of us don't do that because we don't feel like we're the armless police. We don't want to, police. We don't want to be right. have a finger pointed at us. <laughs> I come into that problem all the time. <laughs> um, so, like uh, right down the street from my house, there was a um, sign, a for sale sign in the yard. And I couldn't find it on the MLS. I'm like, this is a clear cooperation violation. And I was like, all gun ho. I'm like, I'm going to report this. And I, I just kind of said, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Just, you know, it'll be up there. And then the next day it was there. So he was, he was okay. But if ever you're in a situation and you're looking at a listing, um, there's a button right here at the top on the right-hand side that says report an error. Um, so you can send us a message uh, this information over to data integrity and they will review it and contact the listing agent. If in fact, there is an error that needs coaching on. Right. Um, but the listing agent doesn't get wind. Oh, Sally Smith called and reported you for an error. You guys are now enemies till, till death. Right? No, the listing agent doesn't get wind of who reported the violation. Um, cause sometimes, like I said, it's software, um, it's staff. Um, it's self-reporting an error. Self-reporting is always the way to go. So if you notice something's wrong on your listing, uh, when in doubt, self-report. Um, that's how a lot of violations get corrected and you will never get in trouble, quote unquote, for um, telling on yourself, if that helps. All right, so where were we? We were talking about adding a listing and we we're moving on to the details tab. Um, no, I did the details tab. So if I was in fact ready to add this listing, so the rooms and broker distribution, these are two unrequired fields for uh, time sake. I'm gonna go ahead and skip these, but just know you wanna pay attention to rooms and broker distribution as you're going through your process. Let's say I already did that. I added my photos. I'm ready to add a listing. Click this button right here at the top to add a listing. Once you click that button, it'll be live on the MLS. Um, I am not going to do that because this is a training environment, but let's say, for example, my listing got added and now I need to change some information. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So underneath menu, add change, you want to go to change listing. And here, if one of my listings needs some adjustments, maybe I need to do a price change. Um, maybe I need to change it from active to pending. This is the this is the screen that you'll get to change information. So once it's already gone active, change listing. If it's not uh, yet active, you're still working on it, it'll be my incomplete. So here, this is where I would change the statuses. So right here, statuses at the bottom left, I can change the statuses. If I need to add media, so add more photos, add a virtual tour, I can do it that way. Um, scheduling an open house. This is where you would schedule your open house. Don't put it anywhere else. 
Um, so if I'm gonna have an open house on Saturday, I would put that information here. And then of course, general listing information. This is the field that we were already just working on. So the details tab, the rooms tab, et cetera. So is there information that I need to change or edit at a later time after it's gone active? I can do that underneath listing information. Uh, the last thing that I would say is if you are working on an incomplete, you might wanna do one final walkthrough on the property and take that input listing form with you. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. Go back. You might want to take that listing input form with you um, and do one final walkthrough and get your uh, homeowner's signatures. Um, whether or not homeowner signatures are required, that's something between you and your broker. Um, but what you can do is if you're working on that incomplete, I'm on the incompletes, here's all my incompletes that I'm working on. If I click on print or email, what it's going to do is it's going to print out that I have the option to print or email that um, input form. So that it's like eight pages, something ridiculous, the blank form, it's a non-fillable PDF. But here we can see all of the information has been filled out. So if I want to do one more walkthrough before I put it live on the MLS, and then go down to this section for owner signatures or broker signatures, I can get that information before I actually put it on the MLS. So you do have a printing option there. And of course, some other printing options is you can look at what's gonna actually go on the MLS. What does it look like before I put it live? Um, you know, Do I want to get a flyer made out um, and have that version ready to email or print? So those are some different things that you can do with printing options while it's in this incomplete status. Um, hmm, I think that's pretty much it. That's the, the meat and potatoes of what I can cover regarding the copy process. Remember underneath the menu section, add changes is where the majority of the information that you're gonna be using um, for the adding a listing process will come from. So if I was going to add a listing straight up, which sometimes it does happen, um, for example, if it never transacted in the MLS uh, before the year 2000, it, we don't have record of it. It doesn't exist in the MLS. It might exist in Monsoon, but it doesn't exist in Flex MLS. So you might have to add a listing for um, scratch in that situation. And then remember I said full copy is really only for you if you're at your same brokerage and it was your previous listing. Um, a lot of information copies over on full copy. So it is a time saver, but of course, do your due diligence and check that information. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say regarding the adding a listing process and rules. If a lot of this information is due or like, oh, there's still so much that I don't know, uh, check the learning tab. At RMLS on learning tab, we do have a handful of online courses available for you. And then we also have live classes that you can register for. So we update our live class schedule on the 25th of every month. So May is ready to go. Um, if you want to sign up for a live class, you can kind of get a refresher on the full version of adding a listing. And I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Is there any questions that anybody has? No. Okay. No worries. All right. Then one thing that I do want to point out to you is information on rapid stats. So Rapid Stats is an add-on product. Um, you might be familiar with it because you get an email from ARMLS monthly about quarterly stats. Um, a lot of people pay attention to, oh gosh, what is it? The inventory, right? Uh, supply versus demand and how much supply of inventory we have. Um, essentially, I kind of like the explanation of if for some reason nobody decided to sell their house, you know, how much inventory do we have available? Um, and right now it's it's been pretty low for the last couple of years. There's not a robust amount of inventory available. So also the supply of inventory is dependent on whether or not uh, it's a buyer's market or a seller's market, right? And I think we're still, uh, I think everybody would agree, we're still in that situation where um, sellers have the upper hand, but, you know, watching for that switch. Essentially, Rapid Stats kind of explains that information. It makes all this information into an easy to read graph 
charts, bars. Um, it's data that you don't have to compile. It's all pretty much here. Um, you can change some of this information. So here's the daily trending information for how many listings we have available. And you can also change that information to do a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day count. How many sold listings we have? How many under contract listings? Um, if you love par, um, bars and charts and graphs, this information is super relevant and helpful, um, especially if you don't like generating your old reports. Um, so it's giving information on the last 24 months on the median and averages for homes. And you can also zoom in on certain sections. So if you're like, oh, I just want to zoom into here. You can zoom in and get more detailed information. Where do you get those reports? Thanks, Donna. Okay, so you have to subscribe or you have to purchase Rapid Stats. For Rapid Stats is an add-on product. Um, you might be able to get Rapid Stats for a 90-day or a 30-day demo. I would call support. But essentially, if you want Rapid Stats or you want to learn more about Rapid Stats, what you want to do is go to your Atlas account. So your Atlas account is where you would pay your subscriber bill, um, your annual bill for subscriber billing. Maybe if you have another add-on product like um, Cloud Suite, um, that would be another place that you would get that information. I'm going to turn this camera off again. Sometimes whenever my camera is on, my internet just drags on and on. So my apologies. All right. So I'm on armls.com. Um, right here where it says Atlas pay fees, I click on that account for ARMLS. So if you don't already have rapid stats, this is where you would purchase rapid stats. I'm not 100% on price. I want to say it's about 365 a year, but here on the left hand side is rapid stats and it is an add on product. Since I'm staff, I already have it. Um, and this is where I'm launching into rapid sets. So that's kind of how I got to it. If you want to purchase it or find out whether or not you can get a trial for 30 days, um, you might be able to click through those buttons and it'll tell you the price and whether or not there's a refund or a 30 day free trial. Um, if you are not ready to go there yet, call support. They can give you some information on pricing. And then also I sent you that demo video in the chat. So if you go to the one of the first messages I sent, sent you a video about uh, rapid stats, what it is and how it works. Um, essentially, for me, the reason why I would say rapid stats is awesome is because it generates all this reporting information for you without you having to actually do the work. So unless you are that Excel person or that information person in your office, having these reports ready to go and already pre-generated might be something awesome for you. Um, I definitely recommend it for brokers as well because it gives you, um, if your broker signs up for it, you can get agent metrics, you can see information about violations. Um, so look at agent fines and violations, top producer information, inventory reports. Um, but in general, if you are wanting to pull some reports for you so you can get uh, up to date on the market information, this would be a great program to have in order to, to find out about that information. So let's see, we can see for supply versus demand. And it's recording all the way up until April. So May has not been added yet because we're still in May. And then, of course, you can download these reports. Um, so you can download them, save them, print them if you need to. Um, but that's just some examples of rapid stats. Um, like I said, watch the video. If you don't already have rapid stats, watch the demo video. If you are interested in it, I would call support. Uh, that would be my next phone call. And we're just about time. Any last minute questions? Hopefully this was helpful. All right. Well, if there's no other questions or nothing else we want to talk about today, um, you guys are free to go. I'm not quite sure if there's anything other office items you guys need to touch base on. If there's anything else that you want to learn about, um, we can do some other classes, searchings, mapping. Uh, we can talk about monsoon. There's just some other topics that we teach on. So I am more than happy to um, go through more topics. Uh, quarterly um, or every six weeks. I think we do every six weeks. Uh, another thing I would pay attention to is very, very soon, we're going to have a new product launch called um, Align Showings. 
And align showings is essentially going to be replacing showing time. So be prepared, keep your ears open for that. If um, y'all want to do a visit on what is aligned showings, once it starts to launch, how do I use it? That might be important for you since showing time is eventually going to go away. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. If there's anything else, I'll hang out. Other than that, I think you guys are free to go. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Wendy. Of course. My pleasure.